Hello everyone, Taylor Johnson here. Uh, I wanted to give you an overview of the Virginia Realtors uh, Buyer Agency Agreement. And uh, please keep in mind that, you know, if you want any legal advice or anything, you should consult um, a legal expert. I'm merely uh, a real estate agent, and I'm going to try to tell you sort of what this document says uh, to give you an overview so that when you read it yourself, you have a better sense of what's going on. Um, so first of all, uh, agency on a very simple basis gives me permission to be uh, your advocate and um, your negotiator when we are looking at properties and um, you agree to work only with me and I am obligated to you in a fiduciary duty and um, also uh, honor your confidentiality and so forth. Right. So here uh, it sets up, you know, your name and my name and uh, the company is Keller Williams Capital Properties. And so actually the agreement is made between you and the broker, um, which would be Capital Properties. And I am the broker's representative. In consideration, mutual covenants, uh, buyer agrees to the point the broker to represent the buyer. So in this agreement, the acquisition of property shall be the purchase so on and so forth. And then the, we set up the term. So it will start on a certain date and end on a certain date. We can do this for one day. We can do it for four months, you know, whatever. Generally, it takes two to three months to find a property. So um, and then once you're uh, you have agreed to a purchase, you then have another month of uh, under contract. So I recommend three to four months generally, and you can usually fire me at any point. So if you decide not to go forward, it's easy to do. It spells out here that my duties uh, uh, as an agent are to be diligent and effective uh, maintain the confidentiality of personal information, financial information, other matters. Um, if the uh, broker is not the listing, the broker shall represent solely the interest of the buyer in negotiations and transactions. Broker has no obligation to search out properties beyond those that come to the attention of the buyer in the ordinary course of the broker's business. So in other words, uh, my obligation is to look at the multiple listing service and try to find properties that way. If uh, we have some internal discussions within the brokerage about listings coming soon, I, I can share those with you, but uh, I'm not obligated to go beyond that. Um, and I may represent other buyers who are interested in the same property, but of course I should tell you that um, if I have another set of buyers are looking at the same property, then I need to let you know that. I feel I need to let you know that. Buyer's duties. The buyer shall work exclusively with the broker during the term of this agreement, comply with reasonable requests to supply uh, any pertinent information and personal data, um, and pay the compensation set below, be available during the broker's regular hours, uh, respond to uh, requests for information, and so forth. Compensation. So generally, on the buyer side, we are paid by the commission that the seller has arranged with the listing agent. And that compensation or that commission that the seller has arranged with the listing agent is shared between the listing agent and the buyer's agent. And that sharing is uh, set up in the MLS, the multiple listing service, uh, and it's spelled out there. So what we're saying here is that we agree to take whatever that compensation is uh, that's stated in the MLS, and uh, there's an additional $300 administrative fee that's paid to Keller Williams. This fee is generally due at the uh, end of transfer of title at settlement or um, you know closing, same term. Um, now there is something called a dual agent and designated agent. A dual agent, um, is, a true dual agent would be if I were to represent you on a buy and I also represented the seller on the same property. 
So therefore, I'm in both roles, the seller's advocate and the buyer's advocate. Um, and I feel personally that that is impossible to do fairly. How can I honor your best interests while I'm also trying to honor the seller's best interests? Since the sellers want to get the highest price possible and you want to get the lowest price possible, it, you know, irrespective of all the other things that buyers and sellers want out of a deal. Uh, so um, I don't do that true dual agency. Uh, but there could be a situation where I take you to look at a property that is listed by Keller Williams Capital Properties. And so in that sense, then we share the broker. And so the brokerage has the dual agency and there is a different agent on the seller side and a different agent, me, on the buyer side. Uh, so that is called designated agency. Um, so that is spelled out here, how those work. Um, with me, you will only ever have to do designated agency, but you, you would have what is called dual agency if the broker is shared. And then this goes out to spell out some of the duties of the broker uh, if we are sharing uh, the buy side and the sell side, and of course, uh, we are obligated to keep confidentiality, to be fair, to be, um, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, the broker uh, agree, the broker shall not be liable to either party for refusing to fail or disclose information, which in sole discretion of the broker would harm one party's bargaining position and benefit the other. That's a key point. So, um, the broker is not is supposed to be impartial cannot share something that would harm one and benefit the other um, you are put on notice here that um, if you photograph or videotape or whatever a property you need to um, ask permission of the owner um, the buyer should also be aware that the seller may have a security system that records or allows for remote monitoring, including recording or broadcasting. Sellers may be able to listen to conversations in their properties, and buyers should be aware that any discussions or negotiation strategies in the property may not be confidential. So therefore, the buyer releases the broker and the agent and employees from any liability thereof. This is forewarned that discussions inside the property may not be private. Uh, miscellaneous, the buyer acknowledges the broker is being retained solely as a real estate agent and is not an attorney, tax advisor, lender, appraiser, surveyor, structural engineer, home inspector, or other service provider. I am merely a lowly real estate agent. I am not any of these other things. Can I tell you stuff that I have learned? Yes, but again, um, you really should consult um, a financial advisor or a lawyer if you feel that's appropriate, and particularly maybe when looking at a contract for purchase of a property, um, you might want to uh, go over that with somebody. The buyer has been advised to seek professional advice for such matters. This agreement may not be modified or changed, blah, 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 blah. We also here uh, give permission to do electronic signatures. And then there's an alert that is, there is potential wire fraud when we're dealing with title companies. Unfortunately, our emails can be uh, followed and um, hacked into, and then, uh, you know, these bad guys uh, figure out um, how to tell you to send them money instead of the title company. And it, looks as though it's coming from the title company. So I always advise my clients, uh, please remember to call the number that I give you at the title company to verify the instructions, to make sure that you do not lose your money. All right, now there's another document that you look at as part of the buyer agency in Virginia, and that's this uh, useful information about real estate transactions. And this is basically a, um, uh, a list of terms 
you know, realtor services that we can provide, um, legal requirements that uh, contracts must be in, in writing. Uh, there's a contract form that's recommended. All of our contracts are actually drawn up by lawyers and um, just we fill in the blanks so that we know that they're good. Um, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to consult legal counsel. Financing, uh, mortgage rates and charges vary with institutions. They also, you should be aware, vary day to day. Uh, and of course, sometimes even vary within the day. You could get a better rate in the morning than you do in the afternoon or reverse. So um, just to be aware that all of that changes until you're under contract. Um, such terms may be subject to seller's approval or lender's requirements. Borrowers will be required to obtain a lender's title insurance policy. And buyers may wish to obtain their own title insurance policy. And that's a whole nother discussion about what sort of title insurance to get. Uh, I always recommend that uh, buyers get owner's title insurance. And then uh, hazard insurance or what we call homeowner's insurance will probably be required by a lender from an insurance company of your choice, uh, depending on the cost and so forth may happen. Um, buyer and seller duties uh, under the Foreign Investment Real Estate Property Act. If there's a buyer, if there's a seller, uh, one of the people is a foreign person and the tax might be withheld. Um, there are sometimes master plans for development in certain areas. Um, the buyer is uh, under obligation to look those up. Property condition and environmental matters, various inspection services and home warranty, home insurance programs are available. Buyers have the option to include those in their um, offer. Um, they may also conduct a pre-settlement uh, walkthrough. Sometimes you want to look into soil conditions or flood hazards. Um, you want to look into zonings and subdivision uh, things, aircraft noise, so forth. Um, and then there's certain things about different types of construction materials that uh, are sometimes um, of concern. And uh, one of the things we hope to find when we're doing a home inspection is to have these things pointed out to us. There's also uh, home energy efficiency information that you can find at these websites. Uh, and the responsibility to each party of the real estate is carefully read all documents, be sure the terms accurately express what you understand them to be. Um, if you have any questions, so forth. Um, then it goes on to explain the different types of real estate representation in Virginia. It can be, there are lots of options and it can be fairly confusing. Um, we could, I could essentially only be used by you to fill in the blanks on the contract. Uh, that's a very limited agreement. Um, my hope is that I have uh, full authority from you to, to advise you and help you and um, essentially be your coach in this uh, process. Um, the broker shall exercise ordinary care, comply with laws, um, not knowing they give false information and so on. Uh, Seller represents, buyer represents, um, dual representation, designated representation. We covered all that before. And then your signatures. Okay. Now, uh, Keller Williams also requires two documents. Uh, one is covering home warranties. And so here's a look at some of the things that home warranties generally cover, they're, they're about your appliances and major systems. Um, your agent will provide you with more information on those. Keller Williams also is, Capital Properties is paid a marketing fee by Cinch Home Warranty, Super Home Warranty, and 210 Home Warranty. So um, what this is saying is that if you are recommended to use one of those companies, you understand that there is a marketing fee that's being paid. Um, I really wish that we didn't do this because both Cinch and Super are good companies. Home warranties in general are terrible. Cinch and Home and Super have their problems, but I think they're the better of the options. Um, so, um, I do recommend them because I think they're really good, not because 
uh, I'm paid anything. I don't get any remuneration. I don't re really care whether somebody's giving marketing uh, money or not, but uh, we do need to tell you that that's happening. Um, and then actually this is an old form. Then there's another spot here about uh, insurance um, that you agree to have your information shared and I always check no. Um, and what we usually do when we're first signing the documents is we decline coverage because we don't know uh, whether we want to have this for a property or not. We wait until we look at the properties, look at the condition of the property, and then we decide whether or not we want to think about going forward with the home warranty. Um, so we will have this discussion in, in full force later on, but uh, this document is going to be signed now. And then uh, there's the affiliated business arrangement. So uh, there are two title companies, Universal Title and RSS Title, that are partly owned by Keller Williams Capital Properties. And then uh, KVS Title also has a part ownership in one of those uh, title companies. So this is to say that all of these companies do benefit somewhat from uh, your using their services. Again, um, when I recommend a title company, and I have used Universal Title, I've used KVS, I have not used the other one, uh, I recommend them because they're really good. And I know that uh, they're going to watch us and, and take us through the process carefully. The fees are about the same, really. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, and the insurance is regulated by um, the state, so uh, that's pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, there's also a disclosure here that Mission Mortgage is partly owned by Keller Williams Capital Properties. So uh, if you are using Mission Mortgage, then you should know that there is an arrangement there. Um, Again, Mission Mortgage is, uh, uh, well, unfortunately, yeah, Mission Mortgage is, is a great company and uh, they provide um, great service. If I recommend Mission Mortgage, it's because of that, but it's more because of the agent. The loan officer is fantastic. So, unfortunately, the one that I used to work with has left the company. I have not yet figured out a relationship with a new one. Um, but just to say, Mission Mortgage, if you happen to be using them, uh, does have some benefit to us. And then there's a disclosure that uh, Town & Country Insurance is has some business arrangement with Keller Williams Capital Properties as well. So if you're using one of those uh, companies, right. And then marketing, uh, understand again that Cinch, Chosa, Super uh, are paying uh, a marketing fee. And then you acknowledge that you understand those things, you sign it. So all of this is part of the buyer agency agreement in Virginia. Uh, my name is Taylor Johnson. I'm with Capital Williams, Keller Williams, <laughs> Capital Properties, uh, part of the N. Garcia team. And I'm here to be a resource for you. If you have any questions, uh, if you'd like to uh, go over these, or if I could be your agent uh, and help guide you through the process, I would uh, really love to do that. Reach out to me and have a wonderful day.